Okay, guys. Today we're going to uh, we're jumping around a little bit. We uh, just finished up talking about radical expressions and equations, and we were talking about real solutions the whole time that we've been working with radicals so far. We're talking about real solutions. Real solutions mean that they're real numbers. Okay. Today we're going to talk about complex numbers, and complex numbers involve what's called imaginary numbers, okay? And imaginary numbers are really, really cool because they don't really exist, but we use them, okay? We use their value. And what we're talking about, when I say an imaginary number or unit, an imaginary unit, okay, is I. I stands for imaginary unit or an imaginary number, okay? What does this I represent? Well, when I have a square root of a negative 1, that equals I. Why is that imaginary? Okay, what do you think, my man? Okay, it was, wait, 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 very, very, very good, but way too long-winded. Basically, what he said in a nutshell is, the product of two numbers can never be negative. That's all. The product of two numbers can never be, I'm sorry, the product of the two same numbers can never be negative, ever. Negative one times negative one is positive one. Negative two times negative two is positive two. Negative five times negative five is positive 25. So when you have a negative inside of a square root, notice the index here is a square root. If I have the cube root of negative 1, that's not imaginary. That just equals negative 1. That's not imaginary because that is negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. But we're talking about with square roots, when you have a negative value inside of a square root, you have what's called an I, an imaginary number. So for example, okay? If I want to find the square root of negative 5, what this really breaks down to, guys, is the square root of a negative 1 times the square root of 5, which equals i times the square root of 5, and you're done. Because there is no perfect square for 5, but I can take that negative 1 that's inside of that radical and pull it out as a i. Does that make sense, guys? Promise? Okay. Now, what if I gave you square root of negative 9? What would that equal? 3i. Very good. Because whenever you have this negative, guys, I don't want you to stress about it. This is a negative 1 times a 9. Well, the square root of 9, 3 times 3, so that's 3. But what's the square root of negative 1? I. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. What if I were to tell you, simplify the square root of negative 18, gentlemen. Square root of negative 18. My suggestion, always take the I out to make your life easy. So now you have i times the square root of 18, which would be very good, my brother. That's going to be 3i square root of 2. 3i square root of 2. Why? How, Mr. Morrow? Well, this negative 1, that's the negative 1. That's separate. The 18 is 9 times 2. The square root of 9 is 3. So you have 3i square root of 2. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Okay, let's do a couple more, if you don't mind. What if I tell you, find the value of square root of negative 12? What would that be, gentlemen? Yes, sir. Very good, son. 2i to the square root of 3. Excellent. Excellent. What about Mickey Mouse one here? Square root of negative 25. Not i to the fifth, no. 
Five I. Very good. Good, good, good. Good mistake too, son. You won't do that again. What about the square root of negative seven? I square root of seven. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Does that make sense, gentlemen, so far? Okay. What if I did this to you? Let's see who's really paying attention. What if I did the square root of negative 5 squared? Ooh, what would that be? It would be negative 5, right? Because that cancels that, so I have negative 5. Very good. For those of you that don't see that, you can do it this way as well. If I have this squared, isn't this technically the square root of negative 1 times 5 all being squared, correct? Right? So isn't the square root of negative 1 i? Okay. So I would have i times the, times the square root of 5. When I square it, that's going to be i squared times 5. Well, i squared, let's think about that. If i equals the negative radical... Okay, square root of negative 1. If I square that, won't that equal just negative 1? So this is negative 1 times 5, and that equals negative 5. We didn't have to go into the whole meat and potatoes of that, but I just wanted to make sure that you understood why it would be negative 5. The easiest way, though, is because a radical gets canceled out with a power of 2. Okay? Now, sometimes you're... Yes, sir. Okay, why would a negative number in a real-life situation be in a square root? Okay, you're talking about phew, abstract situations here. You're talking about higher-level mathematics. Sometimes when you're talking about, wow, we'll get, into, we'll get into more uses for this when we do applications. Okay? All right. Um, so now, one thing I wanted to talk to you that I don't really see in the book, and, and I don't understand why they wouldn't put it in the book, but I want to describe it to you. When you raise i to certain powers, you're going to get certain values. And there's a very easy way to do this and a very complicated way. So I want to go over the nice, easy way for you to do it. You guys should memorize the following. i equals the square root of negative 1. i squared equals negative 1 i cubed equals negative i or negative square root of negative 1. That's what negative i is. And then i to the fourth would be positive 1. You must memorize this. Okay? This is really important for you guys to memorize. And I'm going to explain to you why now in just a second. You're going to have situations now coming up where we're going to be foiling with i's. So sometimes you're going to have an i times an i. Well, it's the same as x times x. You keep the base and you add the exponent. So i times i would be i squared. Sometimes you're going to have i squared times i, which is going to be i cubed. So I want you to understand what these values are because of that. And then there's another application. I have seen on the SAT sometimes, they'll say, find the value of, let's say, um, i to the 37th. Now, the long and hard way to do this is to break up the 37 and then find all of the pairs to pull out as negative ones, uh, negative i's, and then you multiply those negative i's together and then... Oh my God, it's a mission. I found a much easier way. I told you to learn up to i to the fourth, correct? I told you to learn i to the fourth because i to the fourth is one. So think about it. For every four i's, you have a value of one, correct? So check it out, guys. What's 37 divided by four, my brothers? Nine. It goes in nine even times, right? So that means there were, there were nine, nine sets of four I's, correct? 
So that means that's nine times. Um, that's not. Bleh, that's one to the ninth power. Correct? You guys with me? So that goes in nine even times. What's left over? One. Remainder one. Okay. So that is my exponent. So I have i to the first. Another example. What about if I said i to the twenty second? Hold on, bro. I to the 22nd. What's 22 divided by 4? So that means that five sets of 1 came out. What's left over? So your answer is I squared, which is negative 1. Talk to me, brother. Okay, why wouldn't you put 9i nine nine as the question? Thank you so much. What is I to the 4th equal, Papo? 1. How many i to the fourths did I have in 37 i's? Nine. That's one to the ninth power. You just had nine ones being multiplied together. But one times one times one times one times one times one times one is still one. So it's just the remainder that we're looking for. The remainder goes on the i. Not how many, how many perfect sets of four i's there were. Yes, sir. Come again? I squared is negative 1, son. I is, yeah, I to the first power is, screw it in negative 1. It's either or. They're both the same. They're both the same. Yes, sir. What do you mean? If it goes in evenly, then the answer is 1. Look, or look. I to the eighth. Well, 8 divided by 4 goes in evenly, so it's just 1. Okay, what have I said? I to the 30... I did that one already. Did I? No, 39, okay. How many times does 4 go into 39 evenly? 9 times, what's the remainder? So my answer would be I cubed or negative I. Does that make sense, boys? Talk to me. I will want both, please. Thank you, my brother. Sir. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If you have a remainder of one, it's I. If you have no remainder, it's one. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay. You with me? Because this is not in the book. Guys? Okay? Awesome. All right, now. Now let's talk about imaginary numbers, complex numbers, okay? So an imaginary number is a number in the form of A plus BI where A and B are real numbers and B cannot equal zero. Imaginary numbers and real numbers together make up the set of complex numbers. So when you have an imaginary number, okay, you're talking about A plus BI, all right? Where A and B are real numbers. A and B are real numbers. And B cannot equal zero. Because if B equals zero, then there is no I, then you just have a real number. There's no, there's no imaginary number here, OK? You with me so far? OK? And then you have something called complex numbers. They're kind of all the same, kind of. A complex number is just basically an imaginary number and a real number together. So a complex number is a real number plus or minus an imaginary number. That's all. So that's what that is. Okay. Now, how do we work with this? OK. Let's look at an example here. Why don't we look at this? OK. Let's look at how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide complex numbers. It's the same procedures that we've used for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing exponents. OK? For example. Um, 
how would you do 4 minus 3i plus negative 4 plus 3i? You are going to work with the i's, guys, just as if they were uh, variables, period. Add like terms. What's 4 minus 4? What's negative 3i plus positive 3i? So in this case, this would be 0. Example, what if I told you 5 minus 3i minus negative 2 plus 4i? But what I have to do first, knowing already how to add and subtract polynomials. Very good, son. You're going to distribute that negative. Excellent, brother. So I got 5 minus 3i plus 2 minus 4i. So my answer is going to be 5 plus 2 is 7. You always put the real number first. Minus 7i. Because negative 3i's minus 4i's, when the signs are the same, you add and keep the sign. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Promise? Easy, right? What if I gave you the following, gentlemen? What if I said to you 8 plus 6i minus parentheses 8 minus 6i? What do we have to do first, of course? Distribute that negative. Excellent, gentlemen. So I got 8 plus 6i minus 8 plus 6i. What's my answer going to be here, guys? 12i, that's exactly right, because 8 minus 8, they cancel. 6i plus 6i is 12i. Does that make sense? Okay. May I continue? Okay. Now we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing. Well, first multiplying. What if I give you something like this? 3i times negative 5 plus 2i. Again. Don't let the eyes scare you guys. Pretend that those eyes are simply variables. How would I multiply this if instead of an I it was an X? That's exactly right. Thank you, my brothers. You're going to distribute. So it's going to be negative 15I plus 6I squared. Now, here's the key. What does I squared equal? Negative 1. So this answer would really be negative 6 minus 15i. You always want to write this in the complex number format where it's the real number and then the imaginary number. Yes, sir? Um, no. If I factor out, well, yeah, no, if I factor out a negative 3, I'm almost back to where I started. Almost. I'm not, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm almost back to where I started. When they want you to multiply, they literally want you to multiply it out. And they want the full product. Thank you, son. Thank you. Does that make sense, guys? Okay. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. All right. How about if we foil? Let's. Oh, don't awe oh, me. Come on, guys. It's easy, man. This is Mickey Mouse. Come on. Do you know how to foil? 2 times 4, 8, plus 10i, minus 7i. Uh, uh, maybe I should learn how to subtract. Uh, minus 12i minus 15i squared. Remember, this fi negative 15i squared turns into what? Negative 1 plus 15. Thank you. So you're going to have 23 minus 2i. Done. If you don't see that, please let me know, guys. Please let me know. And it is easy. Thank you. I'm glad you think so, brothers. We're good? Okay. Now, since we're already on multiplying, let's talk about, right quick, complex conjugates. Remember how we have to use conjugates when we have radicals being added to, or whenever we have radicals in the denominator, whether it's by itself or, or a sum with a real number in a radical, and we have to multiply by the conjugate. Remember, we have to rationalize. Well, you're going to have to do conjugate. You're going to have to do the same thing with complex numbers. 
okay? If I have A plus BI, okay, my complex conjugate would be A minus BI. Now, I want you to remember, just like before, this is a difference of squares. So if I have A plus BI, and I multiply it times A minus BI, which is my complex conjugate, I'm going to get A squared minus ABI plus ABI minus BI squared. So I'm going to get in the end A squared. Uh, plus, yeah. now remember, it's bi squared. So it's going to be, um, no, not plus, it'd be minus. But it's minus, and then bi is being squared. So minus, oh no, it will be plus. It'll be plus b squared. So this one's a little bit different, because it's still the square root of the first minus the square root of the second, but remember that square root of the second has an i squared. So you got to change that sign. Be careful with that. Okay? Now, let's talk about division, which is where you're going to use rationalization and your complex conjugates. For example, let's say I have 9 plus 12i over 3i. Guys, I wish I, wish I could just tell you, ah, divide the 3i to both the 9 and the 12i, and you're done. But you can't, because you have an i in the denominator, and an i means that you have a square root of a negative 1, and you can't have a square root, unfortunately, in the denominator. But you can rationalize. Whenever you, it's just one term, what do we do? We multiply that term to top and bottom, correct? So now we distribute. So you got 27i plus 36i squared over 9i squared, so this is going to equal negative 36 plus 27i over negative 9. Let's go ahead and factor out a 9. So if I factor out a negative 9, I'm going to get uh, positive 4 minus 3i divided by my negative 9. Those cancel. So this would be 4 minus 3i as the final solution. Yes, sir. If I have a square root of i, no. Well, if I had a square root of i, that would be the square root of a square root of negative 1. So this would be negative 1 to the 1 half raised to the 1 half. So that would really be negative 1 to the fourth root. So that would be the fourth root of negative 1. Okay? Is everyone with me so far? It's not bad, right? It's the same thing that we've been doing, except instead of working with an X or a Y or a Z, we're working with an I, and I actually has a value. May I continue, boys? Okay. What if I gave you something like this? 2 plus 3I over I minus 4I. Well, we're still going to have to rationalize, but this time I have a complex number in the denominator, so I need the complex conjugate. So I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by 1 plus 4i. Distribute. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 8i plus 3i plus 12i squared over 1 plus 4i minus 4i. They cancel. Minus 4, uh, come on, moral. Minus 16i squared. So this is going to be, this is negative 12. Negative 12 and positive 2, we're talking about negative 10 plus 11i over, that's 16 times negative 1, right? So that's a negative 16 times a negative, so that's a positive 16 plus 1 is 17. And that's my answer. Does that make sense, my brothers? Okay. You, you with me so far? Okay, last thing I want to teach you, real quick. How do you factor, how do you think you'd factor this? 2x squared plus 32. Okay, first we're going to factor out a 2, very good. So I've got x squared plus 16, right? Now, now, now. This doesn't exist, right? This is 
Not a difference of squares, is it? But real quick, look at what happens. If I were to set this to zero, I divide by a two, check it out. X squared equals negative 16. If I take the square root of both sides, what would I have? I'd have, I'd have plus or minus 4i, wouldn't I? See what I'm saying there? So you can actually solve these now because you have the imaginary numbers. Is that cool? We're good? All right. Your homework is valid except anything that says, um, okay, except find the absolute value. Don't worry about finding the absolute value of these. Everything else is valid. May God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you.